too loud? Yeah, that was too loud. <sighs> Alright. How am I? Are we good in the camera? You're good just regular talking, but if you get up in the mic and talk really loud, it's going to click. Oh my god. Audio is recording on my end. I'm going to start screen recording. Oh my god, screen recording. Oh my god. Oh my, oh my god. god. Should you share the screen? <laughs> Brandy, how are you doing today? Oh, that's good. What yeah. is sharing the screen? Oh, hey. Hi, that's me. Yeah, it is. <laughs> See what we got back here. Oh, hey. Oh, that's better. Oh, that's right. She's seeing what not, you're doing. You're not getting that's the light. Oh, oh. Wow. Are you seeing all that? I don't I don't know what all that is. Yeah, that's what we're doing over here. Oh, you whose can... who's FEC statement was that? Oh, that's oh, yours. Uh, well, we also have Bernie's. <laughs> well, we don't have Bernie's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, okay. we did our research. I'm real. <laughs> there it is. Okay, are you recording on your end? Um, I was waiting for my cue. Well, we I know. Clap cue. Yeah, I'm I'm recording the audio right now. The screen is recording, so all of these are good. This is also going to be the intro when, when we put it out. Yeah, I'll just cut it out. No, oh, oh. These are all good, you know? These are always good. Are you ready? I'm recording. We're both going to clap. Okay. One, two, three. <laughs> okay. <laughs> use the first one. No, I'll use the second one. Hi, right, welcome to Your Thoughts Podcast. This is Jesse Martinez. And this is Tyler Beck. And We've we... got... Did you want to introduce? I don't, I don't <laughs> want to do that. We've got Charmin Eslin Smith. I was going to say Sherman. That's why I didn't want to do it. <laughs> Charmin, just like the toilet paper, only with an F. I'm smarter. I'm stronger. I smell better than the TP, and I will clean up DC. We don't need just any old TP in DC. We need Charmin. The generic TP we have that is now Trump. Pence, Trump, Putin, who knows which one's which. It's just a generic TP. It just seems like to me like it's just spreading the junk around and someone needs to come in and clean it up. And it's you, Charmin? Is, is that going to be you now? Yeah? Yes. Absolutely. Wow. Charmin's running for president in 2020. Sherman, Charmin. She's going to clean up DC and nowhere else. Just DC. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to trickle down. Oh, okay. Oh, now. So, so we're doing the pyramid trickle down scheme with DC right. going in. Okay, cool. Well, yeah. So we're gonna talk about uh, you know being president. And we got some questions for you and right. whatnot. Um, oh, you're out of frame. Yeah, I told you. Oh. I'm sorry. I, why, I don't listen to do you. Checks. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> so talk talk uh, about you a little bit. Okay, so I'm the author of the book Tangy Matita, and Tita is a Hawaiian word for an aggressive female personality that will fight you. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it might be a Hawaiian word. I'm really sensitive to cultural appropriation, but there is a little titta in every woman I have ever met in my entire life. And Christian may have proven that it could tame a shrew, but I'd like to think that I've proved that you don't tame a titta. Titta tames you. And as I see the rise of the women's movement taking place all over the country, I want women to embrace their inner, their inner titta and let the titta out. We've been told to control our tone for entirely too long, and it is time for us to change the conversation. And it is going to take a titta to do it. And I am here to let you know that while this is the craziest dream I have ever had, it is also the greatest and the most exciting thing I've ever done. Now, my book is a fictional story about politics, religion, and a reality TV show, giving Republicans a candidate capable of beating Hillary Clinton in 2016. I self-published in January of 2015, a full six months before Trump even announced his campaign. And a lot of what I wrote played out in real life just not the way I wrote it. I wrote a beautiful uniting story about uh, uniting the nation and the world behind the common cause of eradicating pedophilia. And as I have watched the Me Too movement come forward, the, the issues with the Catholic Church come to light with the rest mm -hmm. of the nation, there is now is the time. I believe this is the one topic that unites three quarters of the voting population. I believe the death penalty for pedophiles is the trick to uniting the nation. Now, hmm. it might seem 
radical, and I understand a lot of people don't want to talk about the death penalty, but what I, what right. I want to express for all the people who got real excited about the death penalty for pedophiles is we have some laws in this country about cruel and unusual punishment, and all of your exciting ways that you have come up with to torture pedophiles just cannot be done. We have a law, a justice system, and we have laws that we must abide by. Now, I believe we need to revoke the statute of limitations on all sex-related crimes and allow the adult survivors the opportunity to punish their predators. So it is, it is a controversial topic. I know that it's a controversial topic. In order to break through the noise, you're going to have to be controversial. You're going to have to uh, be willing to, to say anything and fly your free flag. Oh, I know. I'm controversial every day of my life. You mean it. Yeah. I'm <laughs> Well, that's uh, that's all good stuff. I mean, those are the things that you need to talk about as a presidential candidate and ultimately a president. So, so is that Thank your you. primary uh, objective? primary objective with your platform? It's my number one issue on my platform. It, it, there we, we have a situation right now where we have politicians who are openly running as pedophiles and openly trying to hmm. revoke the age the, the age of consent. They, there are people who believe that if children can speak, they can consent. And there is an entire movement taking place that a lot of the country isn't aware of, and it absolutely infuriates me. And there is an attempt to infiltrate the LGBTQ community communities love is love movement and they're trying to infiltrate that with their map no map designation where they're saying love is love and anybody who is attracted to a minor should still be allowed to have their feelings and we should accept them they've created their own flag it's very similar to the lgbtq flag but it uses pastel colors they have given themselves a designation based off the ages of the children they like. There is a limit to what any human being can put up with, and I believe this is it. This is the issue that unites three quarters of the voting population of our country is protecting our children. If you think back to the the transgender bathroom issue we we've had in the last couple of years, I remember that. At the heart of this issue is the desire to protect children because right. we're afraid they're going to be molested. But we're, we're pointing the finger at transgender people who are historically and statistically non-violent, not pedophiles, only interested in consenting adults, and we're pointing the finger at them. Meanwhile, the actual predators, probably the one pointing the fingers, the actual predators are running around doing things, and they're super sneaky. They're really smart. It's not just this. It is, it's, it's like watching genius, but it is evil genius, right? And if you don't have that mentality, it makes it really difficult to anticipate how to overcome the issue. And so a lot of people aren't even familiar with what a map is or what a no map is. And a map is a minor attracted person a person attracted to minors. A no map <laughs> is a non-offending minor attracted I'm sorry. Person. I just keep, in my own head, I just keep thinking like a minor, like somebody who mines. <laughs> I wish. I'm sure these people... The dirty hands, I'm so cool. into it. <laughs> Clean <But> coal? This, <laughs> I wrote this book three four years ago and this movement now infuriates me on such a level there's oh it should infuriate thing. everybody it's there's, ridiculous there's this other thing they have a group called nambla n-a-m-b-l-a -A. sounds super smart huh like mm, a lawyer thought that up doesn't it? <laughs> national association of man or national man boy love association oh the romans yeah they, the romans. they started that a while ago <laughs> oh no the, the greeks too so, yeah greeks yeah. did that too yeah <laughs> they loved little boys it was like the best thing ever yeah <laughs> So we're seeing this reinsurgent with the white nationalism, right? And the yeah. Nazis did the Roman salute. There is a connection through history that we don't fully understand. And the, the Catholic Church, the Roman Catholic Church, is notorious for protecting their pedophile priests and sexually abusing of people across the world. And there is a huge problem that needs to be addressed. Yeah, if and they... now is the time to do it. Now, it's, there was never a better time than now. 
if they get caught uh, in the church, they just get sent to another location. They don't actually, yeah, it's a slap on the wrist. <laughs> I, don't even, I don't even think they get in that now. They just get promoted somewhere else where they got a new fresh field of children, and that, that's just not okay with me. It's not even it talked shouldn't about. shouldn't be okay with anybody, but... It shouldn't be okay with anybody. Maps exist now. Maps. <laughs> church in the last few years. You know, yes, church attendance is down, but... There's still a the tax-free status in our country, and I think that needs to be addressed, too. Mm, yeah. I, I think a lot of things need to be addressed. A lot of things these days need to be addressed. Those are definitely a couple of them. Yeah. So Joe Biden said just recently that if you're good at connecting the dots, we need you now. Come forward now. And I'm really good at connecting the dots. And I always have a reputation for knowing things I couldn't possibly know. But my book was 400 pages of proof. It's a much better read post-election than it was pre-election. And any similarities to actual events were not intended, but it does improve the quality of the read. And I, I'm working on turning it into a movie because I know a lot of people don't read. It's just a process. I, I like a... I like that little disclaimer that you threw in there. Yeah. <laughs> just, like, I'm working with a screenwriter. Or a producer, it is true. We have to script, then we have to pitch to directors. Yeah. We want the directors on board. Hopefully that director is not Louis C.K. We have to get all that <laughs> happen in theaters by 2020. Wow. Oh, that would be, the timing would just be impeccable. Yes, it would be fantastic timing. Oh, it? uh, it's almost like the universe has conspired in my favor to prepare me for this moment. Which president was also an actor? Uh, Reagan. Reagan. Oh, yeah. you're the next Reagan. <laughs> Less. Uh, well, she wouldn't be the actor. <laughs> She'd be oh, the, author be the, the author behind the story. behind the story. Yeah. Well, well, so you know who I like more, actually, for the president? Because one of the things I did in my book was I did a... Uh, I got an Ancestry.com account and mm. the whole DNA Very thing cool, yeah. because the kid came forward and said all the presidents were connected to some king 800 years ago. So mm. I clicked leads for a thousand years to figure that out. And I shared the DNA tree back through history in the book, you know, in a fun way because it's a reality TV show and you can't make it like too serious. Wait, was that in your book or did a kid actually? Yeah. No, no. Whoa. Oh, wow. Kid actually discovered that the all the presidents are related because she, so smart, decided to do the mother's family trees wow. as well. Nobody had ever considered to follow the mother's trees before, and this kid was the first one who did it. And she proved they're all related, and good on her. So I got me an Ancestry.com account because I'd always been told I was related to James K. Polk. You know, you believe in, have you ever heard of Manifest Destiny? Yeah. James K. Pope, they taught us about that in third grade. I believe I can manifest my destiny, too. That's why I wrote a book. Do you think that we can manifest our own destinies as a podcast uh Wasn't Manifest co-hosts? Destiny the, the concept of extending the U.S. all the way to the West? And he did. Yeah, he did. He's actually considered one of the most successful presidents we've ever had. Hmm. Kind of a smart guy. Only did one term. Hmm. Yeah. He actually found he knows nothing about this. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I'm nodding my head. Okay, I'm... so let me. Okay, so he's boring. Okay, so we know who he is. Let's figure him out. Let's connect the dots back to history, right? Because I found some really fun, really cool stuff, and I shared it yesterday with somebody for the first time. I think you guys are going to enjoy this. I'm into it. Are you into it? Yeah. Yeah. So we all know the story, even if we don't realize we know the story, right? <clears throat> because Hollywood is amazing, and even though they're not an educational facility. You know, so they don't have to make things historically accurate. They have at least told us some really good stories. So we all know the story of Richard the Lionheart. And we all know the story of King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. And we all know who Robin Hood is. We just don't understand how it connects to King John and the Magna Carta and our country and our president. So what, what we have to understand is that, you know, it was a different time. And, and yes, thank you, Hollywood, for giving us some wonderful stories, but not historically accurate. So as I have pieced together the puzzle from what I have found, this is the way it lays out to me. Richard was gay and had no interest in producing an heir. So he chose his nephew, Arthur, to be his heir in the event that something happened. He left his little brother, John, behind to take care of the kingdom while he went off to fight in the Third Crusade. 
And the, the barons went with him to go fight in the Crusades, right? Robin Hood went to go fight with Richard. And then Robin Hood came back and discovered the sheriffs wreaking havoc all over the place, raping people, torturing people, taxing everybody to death. And John is the one that set the, the, their sheriffs loose on the people in their community. So this this idea that 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 our police brutality is an issue, it's been an issue for 800 years. This idea that we're being taxed to death has been an issue for 800 years. So Robin Hood sends word back to Richard, who's off you know, in the Holy Land, fighting a war. Most of us don't even know why it started. And I actually think it started to end pedophilia, but who can prove it? I can't. It's just an idea. So the thing is, is that Arthur was 11. He was 11. That's why he left. That's why Richard left his brother John in charge of everything. His eleven-year-old can't handle this. John decided he liked power and he liked money. It was a good thing for him. So when Robin Hood came back and sent message off, and Richard came back, John killed Richard and Arthur, and John became king of England. That scumbag. The same issue has been going on ever since. Now. Now, King John is credited with signing the Magna Carta, which is considered our Constitution's big brother. Right. But he didn't voluntarily sign the Magna Carta. No. The feudal barons like Robin Hood forced him to sign it. And they forced him to give back some of the taxes. And then it was up to those barons to share that tax that they got back from the king with the people in their, their kingdom, their communities, on their land. This is where trickle-down economics began. This is trickle-down economics is not Reaganomics. It's it been around a long time. Now, the people in the community used to solve these problems with pitchforks and torches. But 400 years ago, America began. And it has been different here ever since. Now, <clears throat> I am a Mayflower descendant. And 2020 is the 400-year anniversary of the Mayflower landing. And the Mayflower Compact is actually a kind of decent document that we could potentially even maybe be proud of. When you consider the history of um, Europeans and Native Americans, so at least there was one example of us acting like decent human beings. So um, right. while, I know, while I know... Not a lot of those um, these days. So I, like, I like immigrants even the dirty, nasty ones that bring crime and disease, because I am a dirty, nasty immigrant that brought crime and yeah. disease. And I don't think that we conquered a continent. I sure think we plowed a path straight through the middle of it. But it's my understanding that the indigenous people of this continent traveled freely across it for thousands of years before my ancestors showed up and started raping and killing everybody and taxing whoever was left. There, there, our country was started to escape that. And while it was started for the right reasons, we did some things wrong along the way. There's certainly things for us not to be proud of. We're only shitty, shitty, shitty humans. You know, we're, I mean, human. we're humans, and yeah. medieval feudalism is historically known for being incredibly violent. So, I, you know, I'm sorry, we did some awful things, and it looks like we would still have this immigration problem that we have to address. And Trump has really brought some things to my attention in the last couple of years because I'll be honest with you, I never had an issue with an immigrant. I never had a question about birthright immigration. Nothing ever bothered me. I knew it was all for a good purpose. I want as many people to come to America as possible. Send your criminals. I'll give them the death penalty. I'm not just going to send people to another country so they can rape and be pedophiles and torture other people. If I catch you, you're mine. So... You want the death penalty pretty pretty strongly. I support the death penalty for pedophiles, so, violent rapists, and violent murderers. And that violent is very important as we continue to redefine our relationships between men and women. And the Me Too movement comes forward and people are starting to define their opinion of rape. Our country is going to have to have a tough conversation, and it's going to take somebody who's done the work to figure out how to handle their own issues to help everybody else with theirs. So, <clears throat> when... Tough conversation. No, 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 no. Well, I mean, like I said, I'm. this is a conversation that I like to have because it's awesome. it's, it's odd. It's weird, and nobody talks about yeah. it, and I yeah. have thoughts about this, and I can't talk about it to anybody. People 
So because we don't talk about it, we create this environment where it can flourish. These pedophiles, they're judges, they're cops, they're teachers, they're bus drivers, they're doctors. Yeah, definitely. They're coaches. They're, they're, we but, know it's a problem, and it's time for us to address it. Yes. We, we have to have punishment so that people stop doing this stuff. But, you know, this idea that you can be a non-offending, minor, attractive person is great, but okay, okay, I get it. You think about it, and you can't stop yourself from thinking about it. And so thinking about it is one thing, but acting on it's another. Well, yeah, but the controversy for me in that is that we have death penalties. Death penalties exist all over the place. It doesn't stop anybody from doing anything. If that was the case, we wouldn't have any death row inmates. But we have thousands of death row inmates. It doesn't stop anybody from in doing fact, things, you know? In fact, there are prison inmates that intentionally try to get on death row because they have more cushy lives doing that. Oh, yeah, you live like a king, well, in, in a sense. There's no issues until well, you die, and then everything's just taken care of until really then. Valid- point because there's a lot of people who go to prison because it's nicer in prison than it is at their home that's true yes and you just brought up up a legit solid issue with our country and our society yes and and no it's an opportunity for us to address it so we have a criminal justice system and it is not perfect it needs to be addressed it needs to be fully audited we have people sitting in prison right now who are innocent. We have people who That's have true. been framed. Yep. We have people who, we have had situations where some kid was accused of stealing a backpack and ended up in Rikers for six months. We have a justice system that is in need of a full audit and a reevaluation of priorities. And that absolutely must be completed before another execution is done period the concept that we are locking up people for pop brownies for their entire life and letting some pedophile get probation is unacceptable they should just answer the big question for us. and as i yeah. as i talk about the importance of reevaluating our priorities the justice system is at the top of my list well what is the justice system for it was originally for rehabilitation i mean it's no. not necessarily even punishment no the, our, uh, the justice system that we follow in our country is based off of medieval feudalism, and it was designed for power and control so that people could be taxed. It has been around for the, what we have isn't new. It has it's evolved no. from the same junk for a long time. Now, we have a bunch of laws that don't even make sense. And just because it's legal doesn't mean it's right. We've seen that consistently throughout history. Slavery was legal. It wasn't right. It's not legal anymore. There, we, There's an evolution that has continued to take place in our country because of the rights and the freedoms that we are allowed and the free exchange of ideas to improve everybody's life. And the, the, we have a justice system that it, it is a great foundation for us to build upon. But one of the things I talk about in the book, my ex-husband was a cop before we met, and I, I got a real special education from him about the justice system through our marriage sure. and the the, pol- and the police issues that are very much on the forefront in the news today are things that I have been aware of for over 20 years because I had to hear it straight from his mouth. And we, we have got to do something about the wolves who have infiltrated our sheepdog. You hear this theme of wolves and sheepdogs and sheep throughout the country. It's in the Bible. It's been around a really long time. Everybody's got their own twist on it. But our police, our military, they're our sheepdogs. They're there to protect us. They're there to protect the flock because most people, most of us are sheep. But there are wolves who have infiltrated this honored rank and the sheepdogs can't tell them apart. And it is a problem. We have to address the predators that exist within our society, our society. And nobody gets a free pass just because of their job. So do you think that the system should be of punishment or do you think it should be trying to save those who have lost their way? Because 
right now the death penalty is a controversy and it's not being used everywhere it's only being used in some places but the idea of taking somebody out of society is not only to get them away from society but they're still a human being that and i as a science person uh who believes in science there are reasons for people acting the way that they do um a lot of the ideas that we have about human beings and emotions and the things that we do are created by us and our feelings emotionally which is only a chemical balance in our bodies so for that chemical to be imbalanced in a sense can cause people to do things that we don't see as a society is a positive thing so we don't have a lot of research on these kind of things and we definitely don't have a solution scientifically but to kill everybody and i'm about the death penalty and at the same time i'm not um because uh, the, i get it i i do too stephen hawking I, I wrote this book and then Stephen Hawking came out with his theory on par par parallel universes yeah. and I had this flash of insight and it blew my mind. Right. I, it's a very controversial topic and I totally get it. And I, I absolutely, one of the things as I address the criminal justice system in my book, I talk about the fact that we have this saying about paying a, your debt to society. But just because you go to prison doesn't mean you have paid your debt to society. No. Some of these people, we send them there and we turn them into bigger monsters because we don't offer any rehabilitation we, we put we put we put innocent or not innocent people but lesser crime the lesser criminal mind in with some of the most vicious people and there is a we're we're torturing and we're creating a bigger problem we have to address the fact that not everybody needs to be in prison well, there's only the violent people or the people that can't keep their hands to themselves need to be in prison. right but there's almost no money in doing that there's money in well, if if everybody in society to go to prison people would be rich people are rich now because yeah, they're throwing they're, people that don't need to be in there in there the prison industrial complex is a, a very large money hole. It is a very large money hole, and it does need to be addressed, and it should not be for profit. Mm -hmm. Our prison systems should be government-run with government rules that, sim that are similar to our military rules of engagement that are very well detailed. Our government employees have very clear rules that they have and how they can behave and treat other people. And these private prisons just care about a buck and that's just not the way it needs to work. They're not providing any rehabilitation. They're not providing an opportunity for these people to come out of prison with a debt that has been paid to society and begin to function in society. They have to be able to get jobs. They have to be able to find somewhere to live. And if there's a possibility they are dangerous, then they need to stay in prison. One of the things that I talk about is um, the victim's choice and the victim's right to choose and to participate in sentencing because maybe they do want to participate, but maybe they don't and they should, victims should have the option to choose. If they want to participate in sentencing, they should be able to say if they think the person should get the death penalty. Victims should have a vote on which punishment they get. And like then a judge idea. makes the final decision. And a judge has a Either list of, of potential punishments for any, any, any criminal that they have now. But let's give up the victims an opportunity to step up and say no. And if they have 50 or 60 victims, Put it to a vote. Victims, Charmin. Charmin, I'm sorry for cutting you off. You you seem really passionate about yeah, all of this. We yeah. just we also have questions and we don't have a lot of time. So I do want to say one thing on that really quick because it was in my mind and I don't want to forget it. Um, I forgot it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, we have questions for you. Um, I, I just want to show you. We pulled up the FEC records. Uh, this is your. My everywhere uh, I was, wasn't already scared <laughs> well it's already publicly available <laughs> Boom. like you just put it on the internet so now 20 billion people are going to be driving by my house <laughs> it's already on the internet yeah uh, look at the house in ohio it's prettier is it pretty super pretty okay we have about nine questions for you okay okay we'll go with the first one okay, okay so, so how, how do you oh yeah he, she's got him we're oh gonna... okay <laughs> Yeah, well, how do you intend on receiving <laughs> the DNC nomination and swaying superdelegate opinion? 
Okay, Can so they're, they're redoing something with super delicate, so super delicate. So I'm not going to spend a whole bunch of time thinking about them. My number okay. one issue right now is to make as much noise as possible, to create as many followers as possible, and to break through the, the, the noise. It is hard when you're an unknown. I have a radio channel. I have a book. I'm going to be putting out a movie. I'm doing every interview I can find. I'm going to be streaming live on iHeartRadio. Mm. Oh, cool. I, I am doing a lot of things to set myself apart from the pack. Every time somebody gets a survey that is emailed to them that says, who do you want to vote for in 2020? And they give you an option to for other, please write in Charmin Smith. I need the DNC's attention. It is hard to get their attention, but I'm really good at getting I hear, attention. It's ooh. one of my skills. I hear uh, I hear blowhorns are pretty loud. <laughs> you know, cut I, I intend to make some good noise. Just just make one that when you press it, it says like your name in like five hundred decibels. Just well, <laughs> I just think Charmin sure. rolls off the tongue really well. Charmin. <laughs> and talking about fun names, I don't need a last name. It's like Oprah, right? Charmin, just call me. It'll be fine. <laughs> and it it really is. I I. I think we're going to be able to have a lot of fun with it too, because you've yeah. got to get people laughing again. We've got to get people. Talking I'm sick of serious candidates. You know what I mean? I, I'm really good at getting people. Fake serious talking. candidates. Fake serious so, candidates. That's right. They need to be serious, but they need to also not be fake. They need to be smart, yes. and they need to be authentic. Some of them are too smart. Some real suggestions for ideas on yeah. how to solve our problems, not just point the finger and create. Fear. There's two types of leaders in the world. You know, there's the kind of manager you have that you're afraid not to follow. And then there's the kind of manager that you will follow from job to job to job because they rock. And that is, well. <laughs> you know, I have had employees follow me all over the place because I take care of my people and our country needs to be taken care of. Yeah. So question number two. I want, I want this one. Okay. Can I have this one? Thanks, Thanks baby. <laughs> Why did you choose the Democratic Party? As opposed to As, running third party. So in 2016, I launched a write-in campaign. And while it was unsuccessful, it was very educational. And the reality is that with the Electoral College, there's only two yeah. ways to win. And one of them is the RNC nomination, which Donald Trump will get. And the other one is the DNC nomination. Now, the DNC has changed the rules where independents can't run as a Democrat anymore. Which is why... I uh, love Bernie. They yeah. just screwed him. Yeah. And I think he would be the best in history. I think he and Joe Biden would duke it out for the rest of history for the number one slot. Some confidence in this lady. Jeez. Oh, Bernie. Hey, hey, my husband is from Vermont. I like them Vermont boys. Ooh. You're, you're going to like your first dude. <laughs> flirty president. I like Ooh. flirty president. Ooh. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> but, well, let me tell you this one. This one's fun. Trump's president number 45, right? 4 plus 5 is yes. 9. And I'll, I'll be president number 46. 4 plus 6 <laughs> is 10. And that will be proof once and for all that Trump that a woman over 40 can still be a 10. Damn. So, uh, have you been practicing these lines since you were like nine years old? <laughs> like, like since before I was born. I wow. I was a country <laughs> western song in the 60s, and it's just itching for a remake. Ooh, dang. <laughs> all right, let's, let's hit up question number three. Oh, no. We, we answered uh, question three. Oh, yeah. Let's do four. What would you do differently with the U.S. budget? Because I know you've talked about that uh, as one of your uh, platform Can you give me ideas. some of it? We would like some of our U.S. budget. So this is what I can do. In the book, I use a Duck Dynasty reference to explain the importance of income fluidity. Right? Trump wants to said he was going to drain the swamp, but I proved he doesn't have to prove how the swamp was created or how to drain it. And my tax plan, my wage plans are ways to poke holes in the dam that has created the swamp. But for the budget, one of the things that's different about me, right, I've been a homeless single mom, I've been a bill collector, I've been a mortgage underwriter, I and, and I very thoroughly understand modern monetary theory. And my concept is, is that we look at the budget as a whole, not from the way the government does it, but from the way a normal person would do it. You know, we have to figure out how much money is coming in, and then we figure out how much we can spend. The government is confused. They think they can just go out and spend whatever they want and just take it out of our pockets, and that's not the way this is going to work. And as a mortgage underwriter, when I look at someone's debt-to-income ratio, 
I consider what their biggest debt is and I cap it because I consider that as financially healthy. And the idea that you can have a healthy amount of debt, we're never going to pay it all off, but it should be healthy and proportionate to what we're bringing in. And for an example, as a mortgage underwriter, my, my, my borrower's biggest debt is their mortgage and I cap it at 29%. So the concept that the military gets 50% of our budget just doesn't work for me. The math doesn't make sense, and I want to make it make sense. What I really want to do it with a line item veto. What does your husband view uh, on that aspect since he's former military? or Is he still currently military? He is not. He retired in 2012. Hmm. Good year. He has, he has, he has a, a civilian job. And he, what does he think of this? He, um, we're, he has two political science degrees. We are very intelligent oh, nice. and we know that we have a uphill battle ahead of us. He is worried. This is dangerous. We're smart enough to know who we're playing with. And there's a lot of weird technology things that have been taking place in my house for a long time. Um, and it wasn't so weird until I got Google Analytics and it made a lot more fun. <laughs> Um, but it is dangerous, and we know that what we're doing is dangerous, but we're also patriots, and we believe, you know, God, country, family in that order. And if we have to step up for our country and put ourselves in danger, we come from a long line of people who've been fighting this fight, and we're going to keep fighting it, too. Oh, I have I have one off the dome. Can I, can I get an off the dome question? Yeah, go for it. What are your thoughts on separation of church and state? So... Mm-hmm. I didn't get to get it in my book, but I just discovered it last May. So I, when I did the book, I did a, uh, I did the whole tree, and I never got to finish telling you what's exciting going to happen next week with the Polk side of the tree. Um, but I just discovered the Rogers side of the family tree, and it dropped four presidents on me. It, I wasn't expecting that. That <laughs> that hit me from like left field. It dropped Washington, Monroe, Taylor, and Harding. And Harding has the coolest connection to the historic mansion I have in Ohio. And but Washington is you know spectacular. We got I mean right that's a good guy. Yeah. He, so we're descendant from John Rogers, who is the editor of the Bible. He's the dude who oversaw the translation from ancient Greek into English for the King James Version of the Bible. Mm. And when King James died and Bloody Mary came to reign, the first decision she made was to turn England from Protestant to Catholic. And the first person she burned alive was John Rogers, the editor of the Bible, me and George Washington's granddaddy. What a and bitch. Believe, that's the coolest <laughs> thing you ever heard. And <laughs> I think we have a separation of church and state because our founding fathers knew the consequences of the state being in charge of the church. And I keep hearing that people say that George Washington was, was an atheist, but I don't think he was. I think he was a Rogerine. Because the Rogers started the first new religion after that happened. And I was Googling the Roger Reeves, and I was like, oh, these are absolutely my family. This is funny. Like, we this is the Netflix original series, the Roger Reeves. Oh, gee. It is, it is, they are funny. And I think most people are Roger Reeves, even, they don't, even though they don't realize it. What does that mean to you, being a Roger Reed? My personal relationship with my Christ and Savior is exactly that. It is my personal relationship, and you should stay out of it and keep your opinion to yourself. Dang. That's fair. Fair enough, definitely. And these guys were troublemakers. They were funny. Oh, my goodness. It would be such a good time. But let me go back to the Pope's side of my family tree before, before we go. Because on November the 9th, something really important is going to happen. It's the two-year anniversary of Trump getting elected, but Netflix is a re- releasing an original, and it's even getting a limited release in movie theaters nationwide, and it's called The Outlaw King. And Chris Pine plays one of my great-granddaddies, and I think it is the perfect way to introduce Trump to my side of the family tree. Hmm. That's pretty cool. Who is, yeah. who is your... Pretty cool. Historically, who is your great grandfather? Robert the Bruce. The Bruce, not Robert Bruce. He's the one and only Bruce. <laughs> the Bruce. Right? You're not saying there's no others. There's no others. That's right. So, so through the, through the Polk line, I found right James K. Polk. I found Robert the Bruce. I found Robin Hood. It took me all the way to 
um, King John, and a couple hundred years before, the Thumb Broad, who's absolutely my grandma. She's the funniest. Your grandma's just some broad? <laughs> just she is absolutely, like, I have absolutely her <laughs> grandchild. The stories I read about this woman from a thousand years ago, not a doubt in my mind. That's great. But I have this one dead end that made me laugh hysterically, and the last name was Doom. And it has you know, got a great story. Doom. They escaped Germany, and the woman is pregnant, and the baby is born during a horrible storm, and the mother dies, and the baby still lives, and they name him, they give him a last name of Doom. And it just, I don't know why, but it made me laugh, like, for a year and a half. It's, like, it's probably not healthy. I'm laughing at this doom thing, you know? Doom. Doom. And it's not just a doom, it's a Kentucky doom. Ooh. It's really, I don't know what it was about. Doom, y'all. Yeah, it's like doom. <laughs> and so a couple of weeks ago, probably about a month ago, I just ran to the computer and started researching it, and I came up upon somebody else who found the same dead end, and there's a bunch of websites, and there's a bunch of links, and he's written a bunch of books. Guess who I'm related to? Uh, James K. Rowling. I don't even know who that is. Me either. I, you said guess, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I mean, fantastic. Okay. Frank and Jesse James. Oh, is my, uh, my stepfather's related to Jesse James. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I was really excited, and it was awesome to me to think of the James brothers being related to Robin Hood. Also odd, a little separate on the spectrum of rich to the poor. <laughs> James, the James family was kind of dicks, right? Am I right? I mean, I mean, they they, they come from a long line of them, so that's true. Really yeah. much. Long line of long dicks. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I come from a long line of beautiful women that never looked or acted their age, but these guys certainly seem to come from a long line of jerks. That's, that's right. right. Mm -hmm. Except for Robin Hood, because his tight pants right. were just, mm. But, <laughs> mm, mm, mm. Robin Hood. That's right. Really Oof. Oh. <laughs> um, okay, we're going to move on to the next question really quick. Uh, you didn't answer the, did what it? would you do differently with the U.S. budget? I did. We talked about the debt-to-income ratio and the budget, and that I mm. gave the example yeah. of my tax plan and poking holes in it and reevaluating that from the perspective that we can have a healthy level of debt. And I would cap the military budget at 29%, not 50% mm. of our budget. There's a, there, there's a reevaluation of priorities that needs to take place. And the idea that our military is getting 50% of our budget absolutely doesn't fly with me. And let me be clear, I am a military brat and a military spouse. I have she been said it. <laughs> spouse, a commissioned spouse, and a retired spouse. I love our military. I will not allow them to be mistreated. I will not allow our veterans to be abused. We have made promises to them, and we are going to keep them. Good. Good answer. Okay. Twice. Yeah. You answered twice. twice. Yeah. <laughs> That's our bad. Um, the next question is, and I don't, this one's kind of weird. Um, Where's your funding coming from? Is that a weird question to ask? No, that's a fair question. Yeah, right now, it's all coming out of my pocket. Oh, good. I don't, I don't want to ask for don. I have, I decided not to ask for donations until after midterms were over because yeah. I want people to fund their candidates. But I'm a former bill collector and mortgage underwriter and Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's. It's expensive. Right. I might yeah. not ask for donations until the first of the year. My husband would definitely like me to start asking for donations. Yeah, of course. I yeah. mean, being the president, yeah. this is expensive. Jade, I love you, but this is like a car payment every month. Can we, does this really, what, what, can you, donations, honey, when is the donations coming? <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, they don't even worry about it. You don't do our budget. You don't understand what the numbers are. Just keep working. I love yeah. you. <laughs> it, it seems a bit extreme, but looking at the FEC records, Trump's candidacy has like 30 million already invested into his 2020 presidency. Yeah, and... He is paying several people the highest allowable salary for anyone in a campaign just to keep their mouths shut. Wish I was that guy. Yeah, me too. <laughs> He's paying those people more a month than I put into this campaign oh, yeah. so far. Oh, yeah. So there, there are thresholds that, that you have to file paperwork after a certain point. Hmm. But they passed a new rule this year that if you keep it under $50,000 in the year, you don't have to file any paperwork. And so part of the reason why I don't want to have to donations is because I don't want to have to file the paperwork and figure it out until 2019 Paper when I have sucks. a whole year to do it. Mm -hmm. And if Trump's not going to show us his taxes, I don't really see anything wrong with me using the system not to have to file any. 
I am, I promise you, I am the cheapest broad on the planet. You absolutely want me to have the budget. You're odd. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I like it, though. Uh, the next question is uh, kind of a personal one. What was your favorite band when you were 16 years old? I was just thinking about that. Like, where was I at 16? I was living in Idaho. Oh, I, you know, I, I, I was... Our camera lady's from Idaho. Idaho. Oh, Idaho. <laughs> Idaho. 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 Yeah. Damn. <laughs> give, me my, give, me, give me my money. I hope. Um, I, I just have to say. I think I've heard that Idaho joke a couple too many times. Yeah. Maybe. I hope you like this when you become president. I think that would be great. This is who, this is who I am. You know, there's, I, Tax cuts, <laughs> bitches! <laughs> yeah. But one of the things that I always heard from people that I managed was they didn't always like what I had to say, but they always liked how I said it. Mm -hmm. And you're going to enjoy that about me. Right? Oh, yeah. That's one of the mm -hmm. first for sure. And there, there's going to be time for you to be serious. There's going to be time for you to be emotional. You know, that EQ is really important. Um, there's it, there's going to be some fun, and we, we need to enjoy each other as much as we can. Cool. But it, it, it needs to be serious sometimes, and I'll be serious when I need to be. Definitely. So what was your favorite band when you were 16? Okay, so uh, it was like, uh, what year was 16? That had to be 91? 92? It had to be Nirvana. It had to be Nirvana. <laughs> it had to be Nirvana. It had to be Teen Sweat, right? That had to be it at the moment. Teen Sweat. <laughs> yeah, Teen Sweat. No, no, yeah, that was that's yeah, Teen Sweat. Nirvana's smells like Teen Sweat. Yeah. I think that was what it was. It was. No, that's exactly what it was. No, it's the deodorant. Yeah, Teen. It was a. Uh, do, I don't think you know this, but when Nirvana came out with that uh, album, they just had a contract with Speed Stick. And uh, that song is actually about um, <laughs> it's actually about deodorant. If you really think about it, like go when we get off of here, listen to it and just think I'm like how you know how does this relate to putting deodorant on? So it smells like Teen Sweat by Nirvana, <laughs> Speed Stick uh, branding. <laughs> okay, uh, moving on to the next uh, question here. Um, this one's one that we've talked about on the uh, the I almost said Comcast. Oh, God. Comcast podcast, sponsor us. Yeah. Sponsor us, Comcast. <laughs> um, this is one that we've talked about. It's the legalizations of drugs, primarily cannabis, but drugs in general. What are your thoughts about that? And uh, so before I ask, there's these things now. I'm sure you know about them. They're the safe spots for people um, to do heroin, to, uh, basically. Um, and the reason is because a lot of people are dying of heroin overdoses. And we've put laws in effect all over the place and people aren't going to stop doing it. So they're to battle it. They created safe spots for people to safely do what they're going to do with doctors around um, to make sure that we're saving people to save them instead of them dying before we could. What are your thoughts on things like that? Well, you'll be happy to know I address this in my book and there's a whole chapter on my cool. opinion on the full legalization of all drugs in their natural form and the rescheduling and the reevaluation of the priorities for everything that's on the schedules for what is illegal for mm -hmm. federal drugs. Um, a lot of the pharmaceutical drugs we have are synthetic recreations of the real thing. Yeah. Poppy, heroin. No, it makes pain, you addicted. Marijuana. The, the idea that... Oh, yeah. um, Mm -hmm. Magic mushrooms can heal PTSD. As somebody who has PTSD, I always wanted to shroom, and I never had the opportunity to. But now, like, I'm a grown person running for president. I need a doctor who knows how much to prescribe and someone who will babysit me because apparently there are monsters in your mind. Yeah. You have to confront them. Like, I think we should have people LSD. know what they're doing, helping it? everybody handle these issues and helping people with their drug use. One of the things that is really unique about me is that I don't see drug use as a problem. I see it as people self-medicating their personal issues. We have been, we are comfortable with this concept from veterans from World War II becoming alcoholics to self-medicate their PTSD. It's the same concept. And as we have politicians who are calling for the death penalty for drug dealers and drug users, it absolutely infuriated me because a lot of them have been sexually abused, and they're using this this medication, marijuana, for a way to treat their stress <coughs> and their symptoms. And yes. I think it should be legal. And oh, ooh, and 
if you have to be have it prescribed to you for medical purposes, then your insurance should cover it. So you believe that's fantastic. So a lot of these drugs aren't being um, tested. It's actually against the law to test things like um, anything Schedule One is. Yeah, not, and it's, you can't uh, test it. Anything Schedule One, right? So are you? But we have colleges who are using magic mushrooms in John Hopkins the, uh, University and down in Tampa for the purpose of treating PTSD and they're finding it to be incredible yeah. for healing depression. Yeah. It, it, <laughs> but it will stay a schedule one. And, and I think it's the way to break our addiction on heroin because that we have to be using the natural form of these things. We, when we mix them, when we lace them, when we start cooking it up in a kitchen somewhere, or a spoon that's when in everything a goes wrong. It's my favorite way. <laughs> <laughs> spoon just gives it this nice oomph, you know? Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, you have no idea. <laughs> Everybody's got their own thing. I'm all about consenting adults making appropriate decision mm -hmm. and the, the thing about americans is is that every time you tell us we can't do something we run right out and do it oh we're children about it oh yeah if you, <laughs> if you i do that all the time doctor and drugs make the drugs legal i agree i'm with you on that charmin toilet like paper 2020 that's what i'm saying <laughs> right. I'm Toilet paper president. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, disclaimer for myself: I've never done heroin ever in my life. Uh, <laughs> me neither. I, you know, there's a lot of things I haven't done, but I, I, I get it that people like it. And I had an opportunity when I was writing this book. I was living in Kentucky, and Mitch McConnell was up for his reelection, and I had an opportunity to watch that, and that was fascinating. For somebody who pays attention to politics, his election was a master class in how to allow somebody to beat themselves. And I, man, you know, if we really want to talk about legalizing drugs, we got to talk about legalizing cocaine. Mm. Indeed. Yeah. It, so there... it, it blew my mind to watch Mitch McConnell's re-election. There's a... He was... He was losing. There was this beautiful young girl. Her dad had been in politics. The Clintons That'll were do supporting it. them. And she was beautiful, oh, okay. right? The Clintons are supporting him. She's going all over the state, you all know, right. throwing him a retirement party. You know, she's just beating him up everywhere she can. She's ahead of him in the polls three days before the election. It's all over the news. Mitch McConnell's white dad, because she's Chinese, and her dad owns a shipping company. His barges were found loaded with cocaine. I heard about that. Three days before the election. They go to the election. He wins by 15 points. It was like the coke snorters woke up and realized where the blow comes from. <laughs> and they came out to the Wow. And I never expected that. That shocked me. And so I have been paying attention ever since. And if we really want to talk about the legalization of marijuana, we need to talk about the legalization hmm. of all drugs in their natural form, and we need to be addressing taxing it, mm -hmm. because even if we tell people they can't use cocaine, they are still going to use cocaine. We need hmm. to be monitoring it, making sure that they're being responsible. And this this inter, uh, interconnects with the whole prison industrial complex thing as well, with the overpopulation of prisons, with... Uh, Drug users or uh, dealers, yeah, pushers, mules, people who like to shove balloons up their butts. Those those <laughs> kinds of people, really. Or condoms. <laughs> Cond whatever gets the heroin there, you know what I mean? <laughs> Very cool. Uh, so my next question is, your husband, is that like a solid thing? Or... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, most of the time, we've been together 15 years. <laughs> Well, that's yeah, not that long, I think. Your wedding anniversary, you know, any man ever my, deserves a Nobel Peace Prize, my, it's him. My sure. wife is behind me. <laughs> 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 Giving me the cold one. Um, yeah, both cool. of our girlfriends are yeah, over there. Yeah, over there. <laughs> like, not funny, dude. Not funny. It dude. is funny. She can there, suck so on this. <laughs> Um, I th do we have any more questions? We we actually, have, I we think have, we have two. Yeah, one more. Yes. Yeah, hook it up. Please tell me you believe in that shit. <laughs> yeah. So I have... Oh, I don't like really it. different perspective on climate change, right? Because I didn't talk about anything normal. So, of course, I got this one weird, too. Yeah. And when I wrote the chapter on climate change in my book, it was absolutely the most terrifying chapter of my life. I've so never you, been so 
scared and shaking. Oh, it's, and sick. it's scared. Wait, wait, one question before that. What is your view on clean coal? Clean this coal. Is dirty coal. Have you, ever, have you ever touched coal? Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, I'm just going to ask you, like, honestly, like, have you ever touched it? When yeah. we moved to Kentucky, the house we rented had a coal storage portion, and there was coal down there. Like, you can't make it clean. It's the cleanest energy for him. It is the cleanest so, energy. The only time it is clean is after it has had a ton of pressure put on it, and it has turned into a diamond. Leave that stuff alone. So we, you don't no coal, no clean coal energy. <laughs> no, no, there's no clean coal. One of my grandfathers died from black lung from working in a coal mine. So no, I don't buy. Coal. Yeah, but like, like as a coal miner, that's like you, I don't think you understand. That's like a rite of passage dying from black lung. Retirement is a slap to the face for a coal miner. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so I think you'd be taking away some passage rights if you were uh, to get rid of all that clean energy. <laughs> Well, you know, Kentucky, before coal was a big money maker, their biggest money maker was industrial Asses. hemp. Asses. Oh, industrial hemp, yep. It was industrial <laughs> hemp. And they have a law that makes it legal for people to grow industrial hemp. Yeah. And the last two years is the first time they've actually done it, and they're making a ton of money. So much, though, that Mr. Mitch McConnell passed a law nationwide. Uh uh-uh. Industrial hemp legal but do you know it's not in the news very often you know why because his buddies are going to control the profit yeah no we do know that people suck yeah yeah so let me get back to climate change so i have a very different perspective i think we need to embark on a massive decarbonization effort and i think that industrial hemp is the way to do it we have cut down 50 percent of the earth's trees in 30 years we have no way to quantify the impact the lack of oxygen has on each individual person uh, their ability to manage their mood we, we really don't understand it's hot the water's getting hotter the air's getting hotter the storms are getting worse things are getting worse there's a second portion to that for me, and I believe the next massive land shifts are coming. I the the we don't fully understand continental drift or the way the land masses move across our planet, and we are finding these pockets of oil all over the planet, and they're near friction points. So when I wrote the environmental portion of the chapter of the book, I used a classic car to explain climate change because I think that you we affect we affect real climate change when we get the gearheads involved. And I so the the idea that you could have your dream car and take the oil out of the engine just doesn't work for me. Right? What happens when your engine runs out of oil? It seizes or you throw a rod. And you don't want either one of those two things Whoa. to happen to your dream car. Why would we allow it to happen to our planet? That oil needs to be there for a reason. If we look at the volcanoes, we look at the earthquakes, we look at the mudslides, we look at the sinkholes. The reality is we got a monster lake of lava sitting underneath Yellowstone. And it vented just over 2,000 years ago in Idaho at a place called Craters of the Moon. There, we, are, we could be potentially sitting on a landmine. Oh, what a rush of ideas to destroy our country is sending a missile to where they think the center of the, the Yellowstone lava field yeah. is. Because they think it will cause it. It, it will cause it to erupt and cover our country with lava, eight inches thick. It would kill everything. Not only that, but the just the ash flow of that eruption would would pollute the entire, knock out the sun, it, kill our crops, all that good stuff. Everything. Jazz. The way the jet stream works from Canada to Mexico would be would be lost. Yeah, would North be America would be so nightmare. fucked. And, and I think it is a matter of time before this next big shift comes. And I don't think we're remotely prepared. No. Right? I, I it is, the, I got goosebumps everywhere just thinking about we it. We just. It, it is, it is going to be mayhem. And it's not going to be like the cute Allstate guy. It is going to be real mayhem. Millions are going to die. It's going to be catastrophic. And I do not want to see a situation where we have heavily armed pedophiles and rapists running around <laughs> with all kinds of breaking loose. I want to clean this mess up now. Heavily armed rapists. <laughs> I mean, come on. Like, how many guns do you need? We, we can't 
figure out which 25. teachers are having sex with you students, need but now we're going to arm them? No. 25 guns no. at the very least. Yeah. yeah. Yep. You know, and so we have to work on um, building community and identifying good people and how to identify bad people. And one of the things I talk about is the importance of playing 20 questions with someone because you really don't know who you're dealing with. Discussion you is dead. them for 20 years. And so some people like to joke about rape and incest and they think it's funny and everybody kind of just goes along because you don't know what to do and you feel nervous. Right? Sometimes. Like, oh, come on, man. Read a room. Is this not funny anymore? It's not funny. Uh-huh. Just stop. Like for right now, like nobody needs to be making rape or incest jokes. It's not funny. And so when you confront somebody, they get really defensive. Yeah. And 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 you can you can tear apart somebody really easily and allow them to tell you more than they meant to tell you. And when someone shows you who they are, you need to believe them the first time. We it is it's the, the idea of pedophilia. If they're old enough to crawl, they're in the right position. It's not a funny joke. You just made a joke. You, mean, you did it. I heard it in a movie. <laughs> it's insane. You need to evaluate that person, right? We, yes. We have to have a conversation with people. We have to be willing to say, I don't like that. Don't say that. That's not okay. And it's not because I'm oversensitive. I mean, it is. I'm super oversensitive. Right. And I got all the traumas and t-shirts to prove it. But stop it. It's not funny. And right now... We need to figure out who the people are that we can trust. And if somebody's deliberately doing stuff that upsets you, you can't trust them. Well, and when all heck breaks loose, do you want them in your foxhole with you? It's kind of difficult with billions of people just in our nation alone to weed out things like that. They're really good at hiding. They're really yeah. good at not getting caught because we've caught in millions. There's still probably a few billion people out there doing that. It's very hard to weed them out. I think it's a smaller population than we realize. Uh, can you hold I, that, that I thought? really do. I, I think Charmin, that, that... Can you hold that thought? Mm-hmm. Our camera died. You just plugged it in. Is the other one good? Sorry about that, Charmin. We know you were in a heated... You were heated about it. I have weird technology issues. You I do? always have weird technology oh, wow. issues. There was one time I had, like, an interview cut off three times. And we'll continue on this end. The poor guy was just... He was, he's like, I don't understand. <laughs> Never happened. That's fantastic. Yeah. Somebody didn't want us to have that conversation. Okay, we can continue. Okay. Um, was there another question? Did we have another? That was it. We got to the nine on the list. Yeah, okay, good, so. good. Cool, cool, cool. Cool, 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 cool. Very cool. Oh, we didn't talk about the Electoral College. What is your view on the Electoral College? I, I think it's time for it to go. I, well, I, the uh, thing so is, this though, is the thing, right? yeah, go so, ahead. This is the thing. so in 2000, I was turned away from the polls in Florida because the DMV messed up my voter's registration when I updated my driver's license. So I didn't get to vote in 2000, and I was angry when George W. Bush won by the Electoral College because of Florida. That made me mad. Mm-hmm. And I don't think, I understand why we have the Electoral College. I understand it There's has a lot of people purpose. on this planet, man. Right, I understand it had its purpose, but it is not it is not consistent in the way that it's doled out. You know, a vote in North Dakota is more valuable than a vote in California, and that is ridiculous. I think one vote should count for one person, and I think that the time for the Electoral College has come to an end. I, I think that there haven't been enough studies to determine and quantify the impact that the 2000 election had on voters and their turnout when the guy with the most, with with the least votes won. I think that, I don't think we fully understand what that does to the American psyche when the guy with the least votes won. The second place won. People don't like that. They complain about participation trophies. And it's been a hot mess ever since. I think think the electoral college has outlived its time, but it is, our voting system of record, and the only way to win is with the DNC nomination. There's and a lot of money. There's also an argument. A lot of money. A lot of money. I could have won the Mega Millions and the Powerball back to back, and probably not had enough money to fund this campaign. <laughs> the Mega Billions. <laughs> the mega mega Quadrillions. Mm. Mega Billions. There is an argument to be made about the the uh, the presidency also having run its time 
What do you what do you view on that? I, I don't think that the presidency has run its time. I think that the concept that there are only three requirements in order to become president has run its time. I don't know. Um, what are the three requirements? <laughs> you only have to be thirty five, born in this country, and lived in the continental in the contiguous United States for the last fourteen years. Oh uh, right. Oh right. Those those three that I didn't. Know I, about I do remember that. those. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> That's it. That's right. a that's so, insane. So Trump spends a lot of time complaining about first generation Americans, but he is a first generation American, and he's just rolling in here and taking credit for four hundred years worth of hard work to try to figure out how to get where we're at, and he's screwing it up. And it has come to my attention that the problem that we have is not with our brown immigrants; it is with white people thinking they can just roll into this country and take over. And I get it; this country has a history of that sort of thing happening. So Trump thinks that he's just going to come in here and bring all those people that are supporting another team, and they're just going to take over from the inside. And that's just not the way it works in America. And that's not how Americans think. And there needs to be a change, but it has to come from Americans. And for as many things as I despise about Trump, because for me, watching his candidacy and his presidency with my book, it was like watching my dream turn into a nightmare. Hmm. But he has, he, has, he has done something I wanted to do with my book. I wanted to get people engaged and participating. And even if I can't stand him, because of him, more people are running for office than ever before. 444 women in this midterm. More people are registered to vote. More people are protesting and they're participating in the process. For a long time, we were on autopilot with our politicians. And, right. And we, we all collectively kind of came together and commiserated over our mutual disgust of our elected officials. So, and Trump has ruined that in the last few years. What he dished out to Obama, he's reaping what he sowed now. Do you think... Because the way he treated Obama for eight years, and now he thinks people are just going to be kissing his behind when he set the example for how we're supposed to behave? There's, there, is a, there's, there's a, there is a lack of common sense that exists within him because he doesn't really understand what it means to be an American. In my book, I talk about the appropriate American response. And when you tap into that, you unite us all together, and we're unstoppable. But he is a constant example of the inappropriate American response. And he has brought a lot of really good things to my attention, and I appreciate it for him. And the idea that we have people in this country who would rather be Russian than Democrat, I have offers for them as well. And once I'm elected president, I will help them liquidate all their assets. I will cash them out of everything that they have paid into Social Security. I will ensure that their travel documents are fully in place, and I will help them get to Russia. You're so cute. It'll be the best money we ever spent. <laughs> all right. Um, I am truly curious to see how many Republicans turn their back on Trump just to line their own pocket. Hmm. Okay, well, we are out of time for this session. Thank you. Of course, yes. Um, you thank you for being on. Then. Yes, we did. Yeah, definitely. That's... I mean, like, so much information. <laughs> this is great. I appreciate you guys. Excellent question. Very mm -hmm. smart. I like thank you all. Thank you. This was a Sherman Ultra President. Sherman. 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 You're such an asshole. I know. Um, yeah, so that was a presidential hey, I podcast. I married a guy because his last name is Whipple. Whipple? I would marry that guy, too. Remember Mr. Whipple? Do you guys old enough to remember all the Mr. Whipple commercials? I'm, I'm 17, no, so probably not. <laughs> <laughs> He's not 17. There's a lot of facial hair for <laughs> All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up. I'm Jesse Martinez. I'm Tyler Beck. And we will see you uh, the next time. Have a good one. Thank you for being on, Charmin. Thank you. I appreciate you guys. Bye. Bye. That was it, Charmin. Thanks, guys. Thanks I for appreciate running. it. That was fun. <laughs> that was fun. Yeah, do it again sometime when you're president or whatever. Time. That'll give us a lot of recognition. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And when you when you post it, make sure you tag things and hashtag things like Charmin 2020 and punish the predators and saving the Tita and whatever. Like, Punishing the predators sounds more like they would have I'm fun. I'm still with learning it. the hashtag thing. <laughs> um, <laughs>
punish the but predators. But I need help with anything. So anytime you guys are bored and you want to help, I, you know, I, I need help. We got you, Sherman. Sherman. Got it. Fucking <laughs> asshole. Bye, Bye I guys. used to call me Sherman Tank, and I was just mowing over every chance I got. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I want to give you a behind-the-scenes look out. Uh, okay. hmm, yeah, what we got going on here. Yeah. My girlfriend says she looks awful, but I'm going to show you anyway. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Did the camera just fall? Yeah, okay. So, Safe. Here's the camera operation. I know this is fun. She has to and be there. She's a huge part of this podcast. That's but, Jesse's girlfriend. Um, I think I should have blended a little better before I got on here. Look at this. <laughs> I'm not over here. I, I feel like I'm <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Charmin. Yeah, thank you for being thank on again. You. Have a good day. I appreciate you guys. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye. <laughs>